Will not want an organ unit for nothing. No. Who no. give it to me? I say you want to go to church just to hear the organ. Uh, we're going to have a session with you playing on the tape. You know who I got in the session out there? Who? Puerto Rico. You have you? He was there. He played, I had a radio show. They said uh, I had played on it, see? For about half hour. So I said, George, you're coming up to sit in and play the Hangle Constantine and show him what you got behind the Hangle. He oh. did it. He did it. Let me try one. Well, it's going already.
Well, I'll just don't uh, let your beard get flat. No, I'll go to that when I get this up. You go ahead and play there, and uh, I'll put this light up on here. You see, I got more of a condensed keyboard than you have here. I know what. Star is. Yeah. They're about quarter inch difference. Yeah, I, I miss I miss a few, but oh well. Hey, what's, uh, what's a few at my age, you know? People said their bottom squeaked there with that little finger, but he said that's the only thing that squeaked. Tell them wash don't need it neither. <laughs> I'll throw it in in some slow songs, you know. Yeah. Well, anything you want to play. You ever played the Latches Polka yet? Ooh, that's years ago. Oh, I can remember that. I've been trying to do a German waltzer with five notes to the chord. Oh, boy. Five uh, notes? Yeah, in the key of F. <laughs> Because they're too loose at the ends. Yeah. 
I can well, see that. I can see that. It's a new one yet, you know. It isn't is very it? old. Yeah, I just bought that about three, four months ago. Should not get that loose then, right? Something like that. Uh, I'll get it in there. You go ahead and play anyway. Yeah, well, I've got light here. Him, no, I got him uh, a playing at uh, Winthrop, a senior citizen. 
You ought to hear that. I'm going to make you tape. Charlie's playing the bass part, and Rudy's playing the concert. Rudy is 75 years old. Oh, he's played with Garnet, Span, and all of them around there. Oh, he's a player. He took my place September 1st. German fella? He, huh? Is he German? Oh, yeah, he's German. He's he plays, he plays, white hair, you know. He's mostly German. Looks like a Swede, you know. Mostly German song. But a crazy nut when he talks, you know. Yeah. You've got to laugh oh. every time he says a word. I swear, though. Yeah, well, God, yeah. He's got a way of playing Sylvester Rebo and Arab over it, you know, when he plays Rudy. How would you compare him to Danny Clash? Uh, he's got a little different style. Different but style. Beautiful style. Both got a good style. There's nobody can copy Rudy exactly what he yeah. does. Because he's true. got a way of doing it. That's right true. here. But boy, I, I like the way he plays. I even like old man Wetzel Fisher the way he Oh yeah, he had a style of his own too. He did that. that yep. uh, hell yeah, yeah. they're old, the old German I'll play, way. I'll play you uh, that track Thief and Bamer while Yeah. And I, I raised the second part of full octave. And you just listen to the do all what you like to do. What's the difference? That'd be beautiful.
Eddie, by golly, there's one man to applaud here, and this is me. That's nice, nice music. See, oh, beautiful. I got so many calls yesterday about yes. you guys out there. It's just the great players that were there. Yes, no, no Eddie Lash. I don't want to, I don't want it to go on a tape. But they say, Eddie, hey, we're coming home, we're coming right over by that. We're going to dinner, but you're going to play this. Because they were very good players. There's no yeah. two ways about it. Oh, but there's something about it. Yeah. And at my age, it makes me feel so good. Yeah. That's Wonderful. all. Wonderful. I don't need you money. So nice I don't need for... money. You were, you're 73 now? I'm, push, I'm 72 now. You're 72. And when is your birthday then? January. January, uh, what date? 8th. 8th. Uh, labels is the 18th. Oh. And he is 73. He's a year older than you are. I never met him though, I don't think. Sylvester Lebel? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You played in Dungas' uh, our display, that little hut thing we did. Now I'll have a bear. Boy, you guys had a I'm, battle I'm going to have a bear the 18th on him. A, a scotch and soda, I think. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have a double scotch. I'm going to give him a taste of this. Copy this. Oh, Sylvester Lebel, this enjoys you. Let's get this on the old phone. Yeah? Sylvester Lebel, this enjoys you. Somebody sent him a tape and at last says, nobody ever played Cuckoo Waltz more prettier than Kyle. No kidding. Does he play it beautiful? I got his tape. You got, you got he his tape, plays huh? Cuckoo Waltz. You mean his cassette tape, yeah. Uh, yeah. We used to play... Oh, yeah. 
I don't know if he plays much left hand though. No. Not much. Alright. Very good, very fine. Very, very nice on course. But now I'm going to again as good as the left hand. Now what I'm trying to tell you what I like to see players do. In this old time march, Wally Stark and I talked about it. I said, 40 yeah. years ago I went to Green Bay and there was a accordion player that played concertina. Yeah. Uh, I think he was French, German, or some Belgian. Yeah. Eddie Parmentier. I'm from there. Heard that name. Music. I heard that name. And his buddy that was a well digger played concertina accordion, Nord Kirsten. <laughs> and they says, you'll never play the bass solo on a concertina for Pietro's return because uh, we always played... <laughs> I mean. And the player. Thank you. 
can you play that stuff? I don't know how you can do it. Ray Arndt came over you. Ray, Ray Arndt. He's still going yet. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen him since Polka Days one year. They had the guy dead here and I was telling you. Oh, oh, you your phone. I'll just shut cut this, this camera cut off. off for a little while. Ha, <laughs> take a little breaker. Oh, that, uh, who, whoever made that song? Well, what, what is the band? Uh-huh. It's a pretty long number. No, no. <laughs> this is... No, 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 he didn't send that to me. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a late release and Jeff Galinsky played it about three Sundays ago. Something about the USA and the guy sings in English. Good band. All right. <laughs> Wally Stark sent you the letter. He said he sent me a copy. No, he didn't. Al, let me call you later. You know who I got here today? Famous Christy Hengel. I know about the famous part. <laughs> from New Orleans, Minnesota. <laughs> He's got a box of his from, what was it, 61? Uh, 1958. 1958 model of 5 press A. Son of a bitch, you knocked the walls out. <laughs> All right, hang on to that. I just played him that tune I told you I put the harmony in there for you. You know. Buttons or something. Blue, blue bonnets or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll be gone all after. Yeah, well, I know. Not, not maybe perhaps the light later of the week. Because I'm going with the neighbors a couple of days at Arlington Racetrack, you know. So, all right, listen, I'll call you later, Al. You'll, you'll be gone in the afternoon. Oh, you're going to be busy tonight. When are you through tonight? About nine? Well, if I buzz you, if not tomorrow, I'll give you one of the. All right, all right, Al. Yeah, bye bye. My God, it sounds like L. Who's that? Al regular. Oh, regular. I don't know. <laughs> you know, we well, get. I put you in a tight spot there with that camera. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> we, you know, these guys all call. Yeah. And then they tell me, oh, I heard this guy play. What a great player. Yes. And then, uh, then later they says, you know what? Uh, could you? Put, come over and put that harmony in for me. Oh, it. God, they got you busy with I that. I said, why don't you get that great player to do that? Yeah, the great player. You know, see? bullshit. Oh, yeah, it's that's like right. When Banks needs something, he calls me. Then when he don't, then there's something. Yeah, then call he me. knows where you are when he calls. <laughs> I, I call him the big distributor. Oh, well, sure. <laughs> yeah. All these guys are... Yeah. You know, not the bum rap Banks, because you got to watch this guy. Oh, yeah. Boy, he's, you know, like a fox. And, I've known him for how many years? You know, when he comes over to Wally Kadlabowski, the former owner of well, Star. Sure. Yeah, Wally. He, he said, didn't play a concert of Wally Kadlabowski. Uh, he'd be, you know, oh, a couple yeah, peaks with a little. And uh, uh, Banks will run all the way from Pulaski, 220 miles to have him put in the button. Huh. Or tighten up his spring. Yeah. Yeah. These mechanics. Yeah, you know. I know.
but this is brand new. And when I put my hands in there, I didn't know. Yeah. The guy knew me, I didn't know him. He was wild dressed, came in the star, and he had a star box. Yeah. He says, At last, he says, I met you several times. I says, You know, I can't play. So he says, You know, because if you're playing, you're in the limelight, everybody knows you, but you don't know a lot of people. That's right. That's right. They know you, but yeah. you know, we don't know. Well, he them. came in. Let me get a, co uh, a concertina because he was always watching this car, you know. Mm -hmm. Bought the box. I didn't look at anything. I started playing the box. I said, My God, I said, What do you want for this thing? He says, You know who built that? Amo Glass. I said, Well, Aimo that was my father. You know, the auto glass. Yeah, Otto and Paul. Yeah, that's right. I got an old 1926, looks like a star. It's all over there. It says Ellix Brothers on there. I'll be damned. Yeah. Yeah, Alex Brothers, he's on a whole star, Nike National on there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Quad. But this friend of mine that was just here a few weeks ago and passed away, he had that Paddock General. Paddock General. Right. No, no, no. get a hold of Paddock General. There were a few sour reeds. Oh, yeah, well, that can be Did that belong to a detective? Well, well, you could touch that like nothing. Oh, yeah. But do you think I he thought, still got it? I yes. thought, no, Wally Kondo Bosky said, no, I got to get that box. And I, I went to the funeral, I, you know, I donated yes. for the uh, dinner and all, the wife come gave me a kiss, and yep. I thought maybe she would contact me, but no. Now, he had a cousin with the same name, Ted Matringa, yep. played drums. Maybe she's having him handled. He's got a brand new star, uh, maybe 14 years old, but when you open the case, it smells new, the pearl. Yeah, 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 sure. He never played it. This Constantine is damn fancy. Yeah. It was a brand new, brand new concertina. Yep. And I played it sitting on that little hand sock over there. Yep. I gotta give that goddamn friend a little kick in the ass because she's a little bit. Well, I don't know if it Yeah, she stopped sometime. Oh. I know because I pulled it out. It of might be the, the the turn thing on it, huh? Yeah. Yeah. The turn thing has got a catch in there and don't then oh, it stops. Oh, that's what's going could on. Could be do that, you know. But this this box plays. <laughs> you got your hand on there. Yeah. Oh yeah, but it's not hooked up. Not hooked up. So you can hear the grinding. Yeah, I know, I can hear it. I can hear it too. But you know, the I guy got the one like that, a little tone master. Same. That's thing. what it is. Same. Don't ever master. get rid of it. Nope. I I, I, I started up in the shed here a while back. Still works yet. It's better than a 260. Two two separate uh, end controls for a volume. Yeah, they're nice. One thing you never realized. I bet you never did know. Yeah. It's the only amp ever built. Yep. That gives you vibrato on bass and treble. Look at that. Yeah. The 260, the Mixer, bigger one. Mixers. 260 bigger one with the two yeah. twin 12 speakers. Yeah, that over there. That is, uh, it does bass. not have vibrato on the bass. Oh, well, mine's got the vibrato. This one you have. Yeah, I don't have the reverb though. No, no, no I have no reverb. No, you don't need that reverb. This, this is the tone. Strictly. Yeah. It gives us a pretty sound to it. Oh. Now that one I got in the car is Audio Guild, you know? Yeah. It's panoramic, they call it too. That has got a pretty pretty sound. I use it when I played the broadcast. This will start. Yeah. See? So you maybe got to counteract uh, on, on the... You got a tube on there? Huh? So you got pull the plug and then turn it half oh, yeah. around. Sometimes that's, that's what does the humming. That's what they call reversing yeah. the polarity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's hard on the amp, you say, when you keep doing it. You see? And quiet it down. See? Well, and you some of them have a switch on top this too. Yeah. And sometimes too okay. you'll notice there'll be a surge in the power. Yep, yep. That could blow the end. Oh well, sure. Mm. They say that camera. That's what the generator. Beware, yeah. beware of yeah. the opposite. Don't plug it into yeah. something where it's the opposite on the kirk. You gotta be very, very careful with that camera. Do this starts to screech like a banshee. Huh? Oh, 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 oh. It's better than a tuba.
there. I always said the bass is such a big it important is. part of concertina and they don't play it. Sylvester so Lebel says the same thing. Very important. You can't play that bass out there and he said that, 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 that's I, not part of the concertina. I know that the instructors and then they said, oh, Lash is wrong. Just, just pay attention to the right side. Well, you don't yeah. have the bass, you don't have a fold. And you keep everything in unison for my yeah, You don't way. have the... You just don't go out of line. Right. Yeah. So you got to have the... You just the beauty of the concertina comes out when you play yeah, no. solo. That's right, that's right, that's right. Now you see this, you take a concertina and put it in the polka band. Yeah. And you hardly hear the concertina. No. But you know, if you take that concertina out of that band, you know that the box is gone. Yeah. Because it's the first filled. thing that people look at that's it. That's right. Concertina. It fills in so nice. Yep. When you sit down with a little amp or nothing and you play, you can play out like I used to play out at the lakes. Get in the boat and the people on stage. Oh, yeah. And my done. God, that I did that too, really. Box sounds better on the water than it did on land. Carried the cross and like oh. echo. Beautiful though. Boy, that's nice when you play that stuff. And I enjoy that. You know, I'm old time with one focus, but I enjoy the way you play your stuff. Oh, oh I it's just yeah. beautiful. That, that, that. When Lafamacher walked into the Brown store, yes. Where's Lash? He said, I don't want no polkas. I want to hear the Latin music on that concertina. I heard Love you play it. That. He always said that. He said, I have enough of the German and the Polish and the well, Bohemian. Here's something different. I do it all. He says, I want Latin music. You know, when you played that time at Sox City, intermission time? Yeah. Slivers was just amazed. He said, what, yeah. what there is for music in a concertina. He never dreamt that there ever yeah. oh. be played like you played it. Well, you music, said, you told me that. Slivers told me that. I got the tape here, bro, my band I give you there. You know? yeah. Slivers is playing in there. Oh. Terrific clarinet man inside. Yeah. Writes the music he, for he my band. He said the hello down here through somebody. I forget who was out there. He said, yeah. say hello to Lash. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah. Boy, that's stuff for you played it. Well, I just love it, to hear this. It's stuff. in the box. And you know what, Chris? No, no, no. I'm doing stuff today that I wasn't doing years ago. You know, I quit in 68. You quit playing? I never played a job since 1968. About how long do you quit then? 22 years. Ah, oh, come on. Oh, I sure. thought you was busy all the time. Last time, last time when uh, I never heard Ray this. Arndt came over to see me. Ray Arndt, yeah. And he says, I come in for 15 minutes. I'm on a railroad job. He had some job. Yeah. We, we had a shot. He bought me a shot of scotch or something. He stayed till 3. We talked outside about quarter to 5 in the morning. The sun came out. The birds come out. He says, and he says, you played every nationality. Yeah. That's and you had the right flavor to it. I'm sure. No matter if you played Jewish, German, or Swedish, you know that. Just everything you play, is, ah. it's just it's beautiful to hear. Really He's like, a player. Too. Oh, oh. oh He's very you. good on the, the Viennese. Uh, he plays in flats is like crazy and all. Viennese B flats. Flats. Yeah. B flats stuff. Sure. Fingering. That's right. <laughs> I gotta look him up someday. Huh? I'm going to look Ray He's in Minnesota. Well, he's Minneapolis. Oh. I heard that he was doing fine yet. He's what? He's doing fine yet. He's in the 70s already. Got me. I'm playing a clarinet polka yet. No, I, I could. Yeah? I used to play the four keys. I hey, like that in the key of A. It sounds like that was that's a, a B flat. That was a, that was D.
know, that number's been played to death when you're oh, old. Oh, you're yeah. back. Maybe ten years ago, you know? Yeah. And, and uh, anyway, I didn't hear I've it for that I have a guy that recorded it and came in. Damn it. Damn it. What did you put in there? Just straight playing. Nothing. I got nothing it's so in pretty there. the way you play well, it. It's it's the touch and it's uh, yeah. you get the feeling something right you know you get the feeling that's uh, you still play your powerhouse polka yet no I got the music <laughs> sheet on it and, uh, <laughs> and Christie's polka was that played by you no not Christie's polka Christie could have been I don't it had, know it had a different name and then they changed it to could have been I had uh, seems to me you gave me that name I had that one.
how you play those days. It makes a different song. Oh, sure. sure. Yeah, what was the name of that tune? Fascination. Fascination. Yeah. I knew the melody, but I couldn't think of the title. Mm. You know, they wrote that out in 1930-something that flopped in the movie that came back 30 years later and it was a smash hit. Yeah. The same song. It same died song. the first time. Yeah, yeah, it died the first time. I used to do that old time. Oh, yeah. Remember that old, uh, uh, Laugh, Clown, Laugh? I heard the time. I heard about it, but I don't know how it goes so much. If you play it, I may recognize it.
<laughs> Hello? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty busy, Len. What's up? No. Yeah, yeah, what's up, though? Oh. You, you, yeah, you didn't show up, though. <laughs> yeah. No, Christy Hangel stopped in, so we're mucking around here. And yeah, he's got, his, he's got his camera set up and all, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I'll give you a buzz later tonight. When are you going to be home? Oh. Yeah, okay. I'll give you a buzz later. Yeah. All right, yeah. Bye-bye. That's it. That was the guy, Lenny Rosansky. He says, hello to Christy. Hello. Oh, how nice. Oh, thank you. Ro uh, Lenny Rosansky. He yeah. met you. I know some of these guys. They know about oh, yeah. Me. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you. You know what? I made Charles Corral's program at Washington, D.C. last fall. I heard about that. You know, I'm going to be in National Geographic in January. I got your book here with your picture. You got the book. I got the book. I got the book from another gal. From, uh, she worked at nursing home uh, where my mother is, you know. I she gave me the book. I, was, I never would have had a book. Certain stuff I save, certain stuff I oh, yeah. give people. There's a great Christian action. Yeah, that was attainment then. All right. Sure, that was a given. That's the National Geographic guy. He's 17 years with photographing. How would you like to buy some hand straps for 70 cents? Ah! Oh, I never heard of that. Oh, yeah, that's from years ago. <laughs> <laughs> when you date back in the 20s and 30s, yeah. That hand straps were that. And that was money in those days. Doesn't that kill you? Oh. Who had 70 cents? Now they pay 50 bucks for a yeah. pair. Wally's got them up to 25. Yeah. Do. Here's a set of Wally. Here's what I designed. Yeah. I designed these. Sure. That's Cut this nice. out. Looks like a shade on a cap. Now, when you get used to it after a couple of weeks, it don't bind your knuckles. Yeah. See that? Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, if I, had, if I had these offsets on your box, I'd make smoke come out of there. Bothers your knuckles there. Bothers my problem. knuckles, and I don't get the carry back from yeah. this here doohickey. See it? I know it. I done that on oh. some of I put it even on the wood, set it back about beautiful. that much, you know. You know sure, sure, that's beautiful. Yeah, you're going to have to play a few on there, too. Yeah, I hear that, too. I'm going to play this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry don't to hear that, lady. Don't tell everybody. Don't tell everybody. No, come no, back no. And you know, I can remember the time you played my uh, Larry Dorsey when I got it home. <laughs> And you play that, and he said, you'd give anything if you could own that. That's right. I said, what would you do when you're a star dealer, see? You're a dealer, you sell stars, see? Well, he said, you played it home. I know, so now, ah. you, now you can build me one free on the house for it. You, know you know what I did? I like your low flat E, your low E flats. Oh, yeah, low E flat. Yeah, that was that. Here's what I would play on there. Uh -huh. oh.
Are you playing the second part for me in there? I guess I'll play the second part, yeah. Give me that rippling rhythm. <laughs> like Lawrence Welk. It sounds like Rainbow in there, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't even. I you know, 
what you call it, the one guy told me a concert player, he says, no concert player could ever play that on a concert. No, not And correct. my guy, no, not good. But he played it. Oh, I played it every Saturday. You used to play that oh, too? Oh, every Saturday when Ray Arndt was here, I played uh, that. No. Flight of the Bumblebee and this Flight one here. Flight of the here. Bumblebee. And this one here. Did you try a little bit of it and see how it would come out?
Play another one. Eddie, my God, I can't <laughs> believe it. Play another this is one. A concert by Golly Dutt. Tell him I got a glass of Vintage Hall. Tell him I'm charging you, Mike. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to send you a copy of the album. Go ahead. We'll always play it. I'd like and to I, get one of this, though, too. Oh, you're going to get a copy of this. We're going to have time, see? And, and this is between you and yeah, I. That's right, that's right. You and then yourself slipping somebody, burn it. You know, oh, some of these assholes. You know. And then, you know, another one I'm going to make up you is Carl playing. He played at Portland. Carl Hartwick, you know, the country desperate guy. And then I'm going to make one of you of, of uh, Constantine and Nelly. Oh, yeah. I got a whole two hours of her. I got playing. it on pictures here, too, you know. Oh, you yeah. got it on video? No, 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 not on video. Yeah, but there's pictures. But yeah, you we, want to hear we, that we gal, to some she played it. every on the Hengel Constantino, and she said, oh, this Constantino is amazing. <laughs> yeah. She's got yeah. about six or eight of them, too. Well, I know, she's got ten of them. Ten Constantino. Anyway, she played for me. You got a little tape me. on her left? Uh, oh, yeah, that's I'd like I, to get I, it I give you a fast Latin when I used to play for La Fama. Yeah. 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 The man the guy is gone, but he is.
God, that's something. No, no, that's no. The name of that is what? Take these chains. Take these chains, yeah. I know the melody, yeah, but it's been terrific music. Oh, gosh. Boy, oh boy, yeah. We went to this five-day polka deal yesterday. We had some nice polka bands. Five, yesterday? Yeah, and then they had the 47th Street Concertina Club at about Venus six Labor Day, yes, Venus Labor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Terrific crowd. Yes. And we heard the polkas. Everything was good. We got an idea. They had a banjo group on the other side of the tent. Yeah. Guy and his wife. Mid forties, yeah, yeah, yeah. low fifties, yeah, yeah, yeah. professional players on yeah, banjo, oh, sure. and they were well worked out. Oh yeah, an electric guitar, re bass guitar. Yeah. That he could really finger clear a trombone, which is one of my favorite instruments. Oh, I like trombone. And the oh, guy, was, the old yeah, team. a little younger on the uh, bass on the drums, but he yeah. had all the kettle drums. Oh yeah, all the. And players. then the other guy on the trumpet. You ought to hear the trumpet in harmony with the trombone. Mm. And you ought to hear the guy triple tongue in the trombone, the oh, yeah. up and down. Yeah. Sensation, you can't believe it. And they were ripping them off, and they were playing stuff. A few keys, like I used to go, seven, six or seven keys of five, five, five. Yeah, I got blues, yeah. this once in a while to remember. Oh yes, so, you know, forget Don't it. Forget it. Yeah. I went into, I went into, uh, uh, Plum Street to in the key of F2. But okay. I, I played all the right. there, but it's not, it doesn't lay too good. good. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 
guy that says that he's too old already at 72 years old to play a concert you know they should see this play no, then full, they would think no, different he's full of shells <laughs> You know, he, he come there, when I come there, he felt kind of bad, felt sorry for himself. And by God, we was together those two days I was there. Uh-huh. That's all. And then he kept out of it just like a new person. See that? Yeah. He was dragged down. Where's he at? He's in his home there yet, the, or by West Salem, right? He's the Mill Cross. And how far is that from you? About 100 oh, about 100 and, what's 200 miles? Oh, well, you were just going through? I going through and I stayed there. Yeah. That guy played pretty nice. Yeah, that's all right. But, hey. <coughs> he had the blues, kind of. Yeah. Oh, I can't play these in the market. Uh. <coughs> and he went and sold his nice Hangle B flat to his, to his, his granddaughter's husband, Deb, uh, Kevin Liss. He plays at the New Dye Swiss Boys. Well, I understand that you had a deal made that they sell them back to you. Is that true? Mm. Who the hell started that? I never had anybody sign a deal or anything yet. Well, there you one, go. One guy who was selling the back to me, and by word, but after he quit the boat of us, Cliff Hermel, the Gibbon Bower. Yeah. Oh, shoot, he sold everybody else for oh, big money. He had a price people. tag on, and I said, I want to buy him. Yeah. You said you'd sell him back to me. Oh, Chris, he said, I just put a price tag. We said, that's good for your business. Two weeks later, they're all gone. See that? People, start, out of it. people start, uh, yeah. because they're jealous, they either start yeah. rumors. You and know. still, those Hangle Constantine is a poker fest every day. Yeah. They make him money. Yeah. The players are over there playing Hengel concert. He sucked with Hengel songs. And still, when it comes to me to buy him back, from, I would have given more. But I didn't have no written statement on it. Yeah. I put a slow, yeah. sort of a religious. Yeah, I'll just watch the game yet. Tell me how it's going. Well, you got about that much left. Now. It'll take a little bit. I got to run back. The beer makes me toss out here. <laughs>
say for that now? That's a, a religious song. Religious song. Walk him like. And my walk, walk besides me or something. When I walk besides yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, that's pretty. Yeah, that's Even so hymns, you know, it's just beautiful. Oh, hymns. Now, can you play the Beer Barrel Polka? I, I refuse to play it. Why? I don't like it. Never did like the Beer Barrel. You played it. Though. Oh, yeah. Just play it. I want to see how you play the Beer Barrel. I play straight. That's why I don't I like know, it. I, 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 I'll, like play, it. I'll play a Barbara. <laughs>
So like you could play it. I mean, like can compare to you, like where you play the violin. You know? Well, these guys that play it, but they they don't play it as nice and neat as you can play. It. I try. I try to do that with every song. And I know. I know. You know just so uh, neat with everything. I want to. I want to get it so in precise. There. You know. Gosh, they can't. That beer barrel folk. I'm gonna listen to you play it. Whoever, what was the I don't know why I love you for that, but I like that beer bird. I hate to play, but I'll play with this. I, I hate it. Play it anyway. <laughs>
618.
Most afternoons, you can find the old-timers in the B&L bar playing cards. The game's called Schafsko, and the German settlers brought it with them from the old country more than a century ago. This bar has been here since then, too, and the conversation still has a German flavor. So does the beer. A few blocks down Minnesota Street, the Kaiserhof draws a different clientele. Across the way, in Stout Stuby, you'll meet a third generation. Here they don't speak much German, but they still sing the old songs and drink the beer. This is New Ulm, Minnesota, named after the city of Ulm in Bavaria. Six generations have lived here since German settlers came down the Minnesota River and founded the town in 1854. I guess we Germans have a tradition of hard work because the town's always been prosperous, and today we've got nearly 14,000 people. I'm Harold Bierbaum. My great-grandparents came to New Ulm from the old country, and I've lived here for 71 years, all my life. Whenever I get the chance, I like to go to Turner Hall with my friend, Dr. Kurt Bell. Back in Germany, the Turners were sort of a club, and a lot of them came to the United States in the 1800s. The early builders of New Ulm were Turners, and they had plans for a Turner community. Even before they picked a site for the town, they laid out their design, a grid system with Central Park in the middle, like New York City. It's worked out pretty well, even though they turned part of our park into rail yards and a power station. Turnverein means gymnastic club in German, and we still teach gymnastics at Turner Hall. Our teams are some of the best in the state. For years, Turner Hall had the only gym in town, and it did a lot of good for the young people of New Orleans. Even back in the old country, the Turners believed in physical fitness, but they've always had a strong philosophy, too. The town used to divide up into three groups, the Protestants, the Catholics, and the others. That meant the Turners. They were free and independent thinkers, and some of them were social revolutionaries even before they left Germany. Turner Hall has always been a meeting place. It's a place where people have always come to drink beer and talk about the things that go on in the community. And that's why I come here with Doc Bell, because we've both been Turners for a long time. 
I've been a member of the Turn Friends since 1913, when we went to the Denver Turn Fest. But my father always says, you were a Turner before you were born. My mother was a strong Turner. You know, Dad was Catholic. He was gradually came into it. But he says, you were a Turner before you were born. When Mother was pregnant with me, she insisted on going to the gym, and Dad didn't like that. So I was a Turner before I was born. But I remember very, very well at a... Uh, at a sermon one time when, when our minister would say, if you go to Turner Hall, even to the theater, and the Yingstetach, yeah. that day of reckoning would come, mm -hmm. and you would be in Turner Hall, how would you tell that, how would you explain that to the Lord? Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you that uh, it was really something you oh, know, because, yeah. boy, you weren't going to get caught there well, at a time like that. I'm, I'm not against those things. <laughs> it, it seems uh, odd but, uh, to me. But this, of course, was the doings of somebody who, uh, of course, was highly motivated and felt that yeah. this was, was this honest. was a sad part of it that yeah. really it really cut the community and held the community back yeah. horribly there there's some Sunday school that they had it was extremely interesting I would presume that today it probably be of the humanist tradition yes but they had right. Sunday school and and did some some we had Ben work Stockman a, a Scotchman of, of some nobility Mm -hmm. He taught Sunday school. He taught us uh, agnosticism and Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. We didn't give a damn for either. <laughs> that, that is interesting, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? In the olden days, the teachers couldn't talk English or just a little bit. So how could they teach the kids English? But they tried. And they, Mother always tells about a story. One teacher, she used to give him the, give the name, but I've forgotten that. She, she, he said to the kid, tell you me that. The kid said, I know it not. He says, what? You know it not? You stay me an hour after in room D. <laughs> the first Turner Hall was made of logs that floated down the river to a steam sawmill near the boat landing. Later, they had a fine brick building. The part with a bar and the meeting room is still here. They had a beautiful theater until one night in 1952. Hubert Humphrey was here for a democratic meeting. You know, New Orleans has always been... Uh, anti. When Minnesota was Republican, New Orleans was Democratic. And then the farmer labor came, and of course, because the farmer labor, some of the farmer labor party members were uh, sympathized with the Germans to some extent. And uh, uh, when the farmer labor party became active, why New Orleans voted farmer labor, which hadn't combined yet with the Democrats. The Democrats were practically nothing in the olden days. Well, then finally they combined, and then of course when Roosevelt came and uh, engineered us into the war. I don't think uh, they blamed Wilson so much, but Roosevelt, uh, he, he got New Orleans to be Republican. And now we're more or less Republican, but uh, not as much as before. Well, Hubert Humphrey was here. And Hubert, I, I, I must say, I, I've always liked the man. I didn't vote for him, but I, I, he was, at least he was an honest politician, reasonably honest for a politician. And he came here and gave a speech and that night, the, the, Turner, the old Turner Hall was a fire trap. It's a wonder. They had some small fires, but no, nothing big. But that night he spoke, and the place went up in flames. Uh, that, just that part, the theater and the gym parts. I still remember standing six feet away from where the fire roared up in the little hall upstairs here. Oh. And, uh, of course, then they all said it was Hubert's hot air that set the fire going. <laughs> That fire wasn't the worst one in Wom's history. In 1862, the Dakota Sioux Indians attacked the town and came close to destroying it. Most of the able-bodied men were away fighting the Civil War, and with only a few guns in town, it was a pretty close call. In two days of fighting, most of the buildings in town were destroyed, and a lot of people were killed. New Alm survived but the Turner's original plan for the town was finished. A great many frightened people left, but even though new German immigrants came, most of them didn't share the Turner's vision, and the town was never quite the same again. One of the early buildings that survived the Indian uprising was Shell's Brewery, built in 1860. It's still here, and it's still one of New Orleans' most important industries. It's run by Warren Marty and he's a direct descendant of August Schell, who founded the place. I've been here since 1920. And I guess I'm not too smart to have stayed here too long. <laughs> you know, any guy with any brains wouldn't be in the beer business. <laughs> but, yeah, all my life I've been here. I went to college, 
Gustavus. And then I was in the service as a Navy pilot. And then I came back and it's beer, beer, beer. Not getting any smarter. <laughs> I guess one of the, the big things about our brewery was, and this was right in the middle of the Indian massacre. You know, the Indian Wars, the last one. And the Shell people were, oh, I guess, good-hearted people. And they fed the Indians and they did everything for them. And so the Indians were, well, they warned them about this thing that was coming up. And August Shell walked to St. Peter to get help. The women went down town in New Ulm to Eitner's and stayed there. But then, you know, pretty much everything in New Ulm was destroyed by the Indians. And yet they came back here and the whole brewery was left. We're the oldest industry in New Ulm right now. We're going to be 120 years old. And uh, it's always been important. I guess any community, if you're going to go, you got to have fun. And beer is fun. <laughs> there used to be several breweries in New Orleans. But Shell's is the only one still making beer. Good beer just doesn't seem right without good German sausage to go with it. And that's another thing we still have. This meat market has been here since I can remember, selling the same kind of sausages to four generations of New Orleans. They still make their sausages the old-fashioned way by hand. My mother used to send me here to buy these sausages when I was a kid during the First World War. We had all of them in English then. We weren't supposed to speak German. It was unpatriotic. Those were hard times for people with a strong German heritage. A lot of people in New Orleans were dead against a war with Germany. Dr. Ted Fritcher remembers those days too. There were many of these people who had come from Germany and uh, were very reluctant to uh, fight at all and somewhat reluctant to fight against the old fatherland. So they, this is where they had the big problem in New Ulm. And these people came to, my father then was mayor of New Ulm, and they came to him and city attorney Albert Fender and they wanted to uh, see what, if anything, could be done that they wouldn't have to fight against or enter into active fighting in this war. And finally, they decided that they would have a meeting here in New Ulm and explain the draft to these, all these people. The First World War, I remember that. Uh, I, I remember the, the anti-draft meeting, for instance. I, I, my dad and I both agreed that New Ulm should have never gone into that. On the other hand, I, uh, the, the government in St. Paul shouldn't have damned New Ulm the way they did either. This meeting, of course, was completely misconstrued, and New Ulm received a, a, uh, a uh, terrible blow to their reputation. They, they felt that uh, 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 nothing could be done to bring us back, uh, so we'd be reputable again. But time has shown that it was different. Now, the, uh, as a result of this, my father was mayor. He was... Uh, uh, removed from office by Governor Bernquist in the next election. He was re-elected again. I can remember during uh, World War I because of this thing when uh, uh, they had the Food Administration 
they, it seems almost as if they singled out New Ulm. They came here. I remember the man coming to our house and inspecting uh, our house to see if we had sugar or flour hidden. And my mother had bought a package of Swanstown cake flour that she had never used and that had been on the shelf for several years. And when he came and saw that flour, he made a big issue of it. And finally, uh, my mother went to the telephone and called my father. And he sent the police down. And the police came, and then they got quieted. So nothing ever came of that. But people were hounded. There's no question about it. They were singled out, and especially some of those who they felt were of uh, German descent. Well, my father had not been born in Germany. He was born right here in New Ulm. He was only three months old at the time of the Sioux uprising. So he was an American. But he, he took his, his stand just the way an ordinary, sensible person would form their opinions now. In spite of World War I, we kept our German traditions. And one tradition that's typical in Rome is polka music. Christy Hengel has been playing polka music for 40 years, and he's a well-known concertina maker. That was the Rome Waltz I just played, and that's the uh, polka capital of the nation here in Rome, Minnesota. That's why it's called New Orleans Waltz. It's really a beautiful tune. The Germans are great for polka music. The Czechs are great for it. That's Czechoslovakian. And you take like your Polish people. They're more north. They hear like St. Cloud around there. And Wisconsin, there's a lot of Polish people. They like, like concertina too. Years ago, the old timers, they just, you just couldn't beat it. They just, they just dance until the sun comes out. They had house parties and all that. If there's a concertina playing in there, my goodness, that just kept on till morning hours. It isn't like today anymore. The people like it today, but it's such a changed world now. You've got your rock music and all that, and we hear this, I hear rock music. Well, I got nothing against rock because it's good music to the kids that like it. But I was brought up with the, with the good old polka music. And that's, you can't pull that out of my system. <laughs> <laughs> ourselves fighting the Germans again. This old WPA camp was turned into a prisoner of war camp for captured Luftwaffe pilots. Mrs. Catherine Dietz had a farm nearby. When we found out that there were prisoners coming to help us, we were about the happiest bunch of farmers there was. Our crops were in the field and no one to get them in. I stayed home on a ball game night one night and that is when the first bus loads of Nazis started coming in right up here on, on the hill. I knew it was them. Now, they had preached Nazis to us so long and so hard, it could have been an animal as far as I was concerned. And, um, and believe me, I was deadly scared of them because these were Nazis. They were the ones that were killing our boys and, uh, uh, off. But as soon as they, we got them, then that they started to work for us. Well, at first, I didn't even want any of them in the house. I'm going to be real honest with you, because that, the father, you stay away from me. You are killing our boys. The, I'll leave you alone, too. But as time went on, we felt then, you know, you could sense that, that these boys, they were no different than our boys. This was all fenced up the whole way around. And then them girls, they'd come from town. They'd, well, that was every day. If you drove to town, there were girls coming out. And they'd sneak down in here along the fences, you know, where the guards didn't see them. And then, of course, you know, they, they enjoyed the boys, and the boys enjoyed them. They, uh, but, of course, when they got caught, they got dusted out of there. There were kids that were down here who were 12 years old, should have been at home and gotten a spank in Vermont yet, but they liked boys, too, and they came down here, too. While these German pilots were working in our fields, Jack Alfred from New Orleans was flying American planes over Germany. It's kind of funny, you know, I don't think I have a brogue. <laughs> you know, 
but uh, when I got in the service, boy, <laughs> at that time, everybody called me Dutch because they said we had such a bad brogue. Lived here all my life, you take it for granted, I guess. I was shot down in, actually over the Brenner Pass, and uh, ended up at PW, and then I got into Switzerland and set out the war in Switzerland. I was semi-captured, uh, never got to really in a really good prison camp or anything, but uh, I, was, I was more towards the end of the war, and they had such a mess. I got shot down three times, the first couple of times I walked out. And then when uh, somebody stopped me or something, I just kind of acted half shell-shocked. I could talk German, and they just kind of let me go. I changed clothes right away. I didn't keep my uniform. So. But um, I don't suppose that towards the beginning I wore anything I could have, you know, they were pretty sharp yet. But it was almost all, either children or older people. There was... Not much young one around. Prisoners of war get beat up because they had a German name, could talk German, fighting their own brothers and sisters, they used to tell us. But I don't know. I, I guess I just didn't think about it. I was American and they were German. We were fighting. Uh, you know, either you shot or they shot, one of the two. We killed them and they killed us here. It didn't make no sense. We had one boy there. He was so bitter. He didn't want our damn lunch. He, he just wouldn't give in. And that was sad. Yeah. After that, I always seen he got a little bigger piece of cake. I thought, oh, the heck with the others. But uh, he took a liking to you then, and uh, uh, life can be cruel. Things have changed a lot around here since the Second World War. Many of the old German valleys have changed too. The other day I asked some kids what discipline means, and they said punishment. That's not the attitude that built this town. More of our young people are going away to college nowadays, and that's a good thing. But a lot of them don't come back. Jill Schlong is one that did. I guess I'll always consider New Ulm my home, no matter where I go, what I do. This will be home to me. But there is a difference. Um, our family's not the founding stock. Although we've been here for the past 20 years, you're not really an outsider, but you're not as inside as you could get. Uh, I don't feel uncomfortable as such, but it's obvious. There's, you're still an outslander, as the term goes. I guess when I was growing up, the German traditions as such didn't hold that much meaning for me. I was so enthralled in horses. <laughs> Nothing but horses held meaning for me. But I did grow up in a very conservative household a very strong household and at a very young age it was outlined very clear to us what was right and what was wrong and when we reached that age that we had to start making our own decisions we knew exactly what was right and what was wrong um, the decisions weren't that hard to make later on in life because we had grown up the way we had with values and morals implemented into us at a very, very young age, and they were consistent. They didn't change with the times. That's my biggest worry as far as the community is, is uh, concerned, is that we practice our traditions, we go through the motions, and yet the very feeling as to why we do these things are so often lacking. Such an emphasis is placed on the concrete things, the beer, the singing, the dancing, that we lose the reason why. And as far as I can see, to myself anyway, the reason why is that tremendous German strength that has allowed New Ulm to stay strong throughout so many hardships, through the Sioux uprising, through World War I. Uh, I think without that strength, New Ulm's going to become like every other little American city on the map the traditions are going to become plastic. They're going to become commercial. They're going to lose all meaning whatsoever. I don't think our traditions have lost their meaning, at least not so far. A few weeks ago, a group of West Berliners visited New Orleans, and we gave a picnic for them. Some of us could speak their language, but still, there's a big difference. We're Americans and have been since the early days. I don't think New Orleans all that different from other towns. 
most Americans have an old world heritage of one kind or another. Maybe we've just held on to ours a little bit longer.
Lakefield. We start out with Lakeside for Lakefield, yeah. I know they're having a celebration uptown there. I see them eating burgers anyway. <laughs> there we go, one more, one more. This time it's going to be, oh, how about the Sweet Violets, huh? That's so pretty. I never played this in the key of A before, but I'm going to try it now.
Then he said, hey, something went wrong with it. And it fell. I thought right away, boy, that didn't do it any good. Because I mean, never give me any trouble. I've had it in how many years? Never had anything more. But when that fell, it even cracked the frame up there. Bobby brings his, that'd be nice. I'll give him a tape of our video and everything here, so.
Dusty. See? <laughs> Don't sound system, but I guess we'll manage it. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. Who's time late, huh? Sound system wants to work out half the time. This one ain't working now. It fell down down the car the other day, and I don't know why it don't work. That's it. It worked when I tested it, but it don't work now.